And I want to talk to you this morning for the next 35 minutes about the mystery of Jesus. The mystery of Jesus. Now, the Spirit of the Lord dealt with me about a year and a half ago and began to take me into this scripture as to why he asked the disciples what he did and says, Isaac, I want you to put this in a book and I want you to be bold enough to preach it and teach it and write it and put it in print for the next generation because I am asking the same question now that I asked then. Many people are worshiping me they're serving me, they're preaching about me, and still don't know who I am. And now he was talking to me too, because remember, I'm the one he's given the revelation to. And so I'm like, Lord, what is it then? What, what do we need to see? What, what, what am I not seeing? I, I, I've read the Bible. I've seen you. I've preached for 25 years about you. What is it that I'm missing? And the Spirit of God had to pull back the cover on my eyes, just like he had to do on Peter's eyes to show me who he was. And I saw it. And this is why I entitled this the mystery of Jesus. Because Jesus' true identity was hidden in a mystery. It was hidden from the foundation of the world because this is how God upset the enemy's plans. Is that whenever the Lord wants to move off the enemy's radar, he does it by revelation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because see, revelation is the thing that you can't get to unless God pulls back the curtain. And Jesus had been walking around the earth for 33 years. He's getting ready now to transition from going from just his earthly purpose into the transition of, of Calvary to bring the church into a place that it was created to be. And Jesus had been around them walking and talking and working miracles, signs and wonders, turning water into wine, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, he speaking the wind, speaking the waves, walking on water, doing all of these things. And now it comes to the time for the crescendo of the ministry in which he was to perfect in the earth realm and now he knows he's getting ready to hand it over to the church but he says before I can hand it over to you you've got to get this revelation who do men say that I am what are they saying about me? Now, it's amazing that a man that had been with them, them, the disciples, for three years now, and had been walking around in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Capernaum, all of these places. It's amazing that he would get to the point at the 33 years and ask the question, who are they saying I am? And notice, nobody answers. You are Mary's baby. Nobody is answering, of course, you're Joseph's son. Why? Because they knew there was something about him they just couldn't put their finger on. They knew that he was a man, but they just didn't know what kind of man he was and so they're coming up with all kind of answers to try to explain what they're seeing manifested through Jesus and they come up with some of the weirdest things they say you're John the Baptist from the dead I mean we thought he got beheaded but maybe he didn't get beheaded even though John baptized you I don't know how you could be John I mean, they were so confused. There was a confusion. Why? Because his true identity was hidden. It was hidden. And so most of them explained who Jesus was. Listen to me now. By what he did. 
But he did not ask them, who do men say what I did? <laughs> he says, whom do men say that I am? Because every other description was about a healer. It was about a deliverer or a messiah or a teacher or a miracle worker or a rabbi. They had all these titles, but they did not know the true idea. Identity. Who, who, who am I? I didn't ask you what I did. I asked you who I am. And they didn't know. They had to come to grips. They didn't know. They didn't know. There were all kind of wild rumors out there. And he knew they didn't know because he knew they couldn't know. Because his identity had been hidden for such a time as this. It was time to finally reveal and unfold the mystery of his true identity. And so none of them knew. They say, John, prophets, I don't know. Elijah, I, we don't know. Uh, he turns to his disciples. He says, who do you say I am? <laughs> and the disciples start backing up because they had to come to the conclusion <laughs> That they don't know who you are. And even though we've been with you, we don't know either. And they start backing up because they did not know. And Jesus knew they did not know. They could not know. Because it wasn't time for it to be revealed. And then it happened. God snatched the curtains of heaven back and downloaded revelation into Peter. A revelation that had been hidden from the foundations of the world. They did not know his true identity. And God with one blast of lightning downloaded his divine insight into Peter and Peter says I got it I got it thou art the Christ the son of the living He says that that's it. That's it. That's why when we were on a boat and we were about to sink and we went to wake you up and you woke up and went to the edge of the boat and said, peace be still. And we wondered what manner of man is this? That this man doesn't just talk to people. He talks to wind. And waves. That's why Peter says we couldn't understand it when you showed up late to Lazarus burial. <laughs> On purpose. Until he was four days dead stinking. And yet we saw your humanity because you wept. But then right in the middle of weeping, you dried your eye. Turned around and said, move the stone. And then called him from the dead. Who in the world are you? We didn't see it. We didn't, we didn't understand it. We didn't understand it when you walked up on the demoniac of Gadara. A man that was possessed with so many devils, he was out of his mind. They couldn't chain him. He was cutting himself, sleeping naked in the tombs. He was out of his mind until you walked off the boat. And the moment you walked off the boat, demons start negotiating just how they would be cast out. Because they knew they were going to have to go if you told them to. We, we didn't know who in the world you were but we got it. You are the son of the living God. 
as a man in the earth. And Jesus says, that's what I came to show you. I came to show you what a man looks like who is a son of God in the earth realm. I came to show you what a son looks like with flesh on. I came to show you what an offspring from God looks like because the only men you've been looking at are men and women that have produced natural men and women born of natural men and women but you ain't ever seen God have a baby <laughs> good God he said he said you ain't ever seen what a son from God looks like you ain't ever seen what a man looks like who is also a son of God and Peter said that's what you've been trying to show us you've been trying to show us what a son of God looks like as a man that's why we couldn't figure you out. We couldn't figure you out because you would confuse us. Because now that we understand that, we understand why you did what you did. Because you're, 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 you're not just a man. You're the son of God as a man. <laughs> That's why you confuse us because sometimes you would go man and then sometimes you go son of God. <laughs> and you kept flipping back and forth and we couldn't get you because you were ambidextrous enough to reach into the human side but yet stretch enough to the divine side and you kept flipping back for us. You would sit down and eat fish and then you would get on the boat and talk to fish to come around and we couldn't get you because you were divinity in humanity. We couldn't understand it because you are the son of Mary, but then you're the son of God. And so you confused us, but I got it now. 